In section 10.7, we're looking at complex numbers. Our objectives are to write square roots of negative numbers in the form of b i, where i is the imaginary number. Number two is to add or subtract complex numbers, multiply complex numbers, divide complex numbers, and raise i to powers. We're gonna write each of these radicals using I notation. And I wanna begin by talking a little bit about imaginary numbers. By definition, the number I is called the imaginary unit. It's the number such that I squared is equal to negative one. And by definition for any positive real number A, the square root of negative A can be written as I times the square root of A. So we are defining this square root of negative 1 is equal to i. That's called the imaginary unit. Since you can't take the square root of a negative 1, we use i to represent that in algebra so that we can still work with these types of problems. And number 1, we want to write using i notation the square root of negative 9. Since the square root of negative 9 can be written as 9 times negative 1 under the square root, and the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1, then we can write this as 3i, where the square root of negative 9 is 3i. For example, b, we have the square root of negative 18. We can factor this and know that negative 18 is the same thing as 9 times negative 2. We could also write this as square root of 9 times negative 1 times 2, and then write it as the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 2, which then simplifies to 3i square root of 2. Because the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. So the square root of negative 18 is written as 3i square root of 2. In example C, we have negative square root of 4. Now since the negative is out in front of the radical sign, it is not an imaginary number or the imaginary unit. We actually just leave our answer with a negative coefficient of the square root of 4, which is 2. So this negative square root of 4 is negative 2. In example D, we have 5 times the square root of negative 20. Well, we can write the square root of negative 20 as 4 times negative 1 times 5, where the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 5 can't be simplified. So we can write this as 4 times the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 5, or 5 times 2 times i times square root of 5, or in simplified form, 10i square root of 5. For these examples, we're writing using i notation. Then we're going to multiply or divide as indicated. Now, since i is equal to the square root of negative 1, by squaring both sides, we end up with i squared is equal to negative 1. So we have, in example e, the square root of negative 3 times the square root of negative 7, and this is the same thing as i times the square root of 3 times i times the square root of 7. And by multiplying, we get i squared times the square root of 21. Since i squared can be simplified to negative 1, we can write this as negative 1 times the square root of 21, or simply negative square root of 21 as our final answer. In example f, we can write the square root of 25 times the square root of negative 1 as 5 times i, since the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So we can write our final answer as 5 I. In example G, we have the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 64. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of negative 64 is 
8i. So we can simplify this as 16i as our answer. In example h, we have the square root of 81 divided by the square root of negative 6. I'm going to first write it using i notation, and then we're going to rationalize the denominator. So in our numerator, the square root of 81 is 9, and in the denominator, the square root of negative 6 can be written as i times the square root of 6. Now when we rationalize the denominator, we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by i times the square root of 6. Our numerator becomes 9i square root of 6, and our denominator becomes i squared square root of 36, which is 6. We can then simplify this as, since by definition our i squared is equal to negative 1, we can write this as 9i square root of 6 in the numerator over negative 6 in the denominator. We can further simplify this fraction by reducing 9 over negative 6 and writing this as negative 3i square root of 6 all divided by 2 as our final answer. In these examples, we're going to be working with complex numbers, where complex numbers are typically written in the form of a plus bi, where a is the real part and the bi is the imaginary part, where i is equal to the square root of negative 1. We're going to add or subtract as indicated and then write our answers in the a plus bi form. When we're adding complex numbers, we're adding like terms, just like when we're adding polynomial expressions together. So let's begin with 3 minus 5i plus 2 plus 4i. So we can write 3 minus 5i, we're adding the entire quantity, so we're adding 2 and 4i. Then we will be combining like terms, beginning with the constants, 3 plus 2 is 5 and then adding the imaginary parts together, negative 5i plus 4i is negative i. So our final answer in complex form a plus bi is 5 minus i. In example b, we're subtracting the entire quantity, beginning with 8 minus i, subtracting the quantity 2 minus 3i. So let's distribute that negative to make it a minus 2 plus 3i. We are going to be adding the real parts together and adding the imaginary parts together so that we can, when we combine like terms we get 6 plus 2i as our final answer. In example C we have 7 minus the entire quantity 9 plus 3i. We will be distributing that negative sign to get 7 minus 9 minus 3i. By combining just the real parts together and simplifying, 7 minus 9 is negative 2 minus 3i. Negative 2 minus 3i is our final answer written in the a plus bi form for complex numbers. For these examples, we're going to multiply and then write our answers in the a plus bi form. Remember that i is equal to the square root of negative 1, and i squared is equal to negative 1. So in example a, 6i times 8i is 6 times 8, which is 48, times i times i, which is i squared. But i squared can be written as 48 times a negative 1, and then we can write our final answer as negative 48. In example B, negative 3i times 5i is negative 3 times 5, which is negative 15, and i times i, which is i squared. And since i squared is negative 1, our final answer is negative 15 times negative 1, which is 15. In example C, we are distributing the 2i. 2i times 4 is 8i and 2i times a negative 9i is negative 18i squared. Now, i squared is the same thing as a negative 1. So we have 8i minus 18 times negative 1, or 8i plus 18. 
Now we do want to write our answers in the form of a plus bi, where the real part is first, in this case 18, and then the imaginary part, 8i. Our final answer in a plus bi form is 18 plus 8i. In example D, we're multiplying the binomial 2 plus i times the binomial 1 plus 4i. Using the FOIL first, outer, inner, last, we multiply to get 2 times 1, which is 2, for the first. The outer is 2 times 4i, or plus 8i. The inner is i times 1, which is plus i. And then the last is i times 4i, which is plus 4i squared. Let's simplify by combining the middle two terms, the like terms, to get 2 plus 8i plus i is 9i. And then remember, i squared is negative 1. So this is the same thing as 4 times negative 1. Now we can combine the real terms 2 plus negative 4 so that we end up with a negative 2 plus 9i as our final answer in the a plus bi form. In example e, we're multiplying the binomial square root of 2 minus 2i times the binomial square root of 2 plus 2i. You may recognize this in the form of a minus b times a plus b. So we'll be able to simplify this when doing the FOIL method. So when we multiply the first, square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is 2. The outer is plus 2 times the square root of 2i. The inner is minus 2 times the square root of 2i. And then the last is minus 4i squared. When we simplify by combining the middle two terms, these are opposites, so they're going to cancel out. And 4i squared is the same thing as negative 4 times negative 1, since i squared is negative 1. So this becomes 2 plus 4. So our final answer is 6. In example f, we have the binomial 3 minus 2i squared. So we can write this as 3 minus 2i times 3 minus 2i and use the FOIL process to expand. 3 times 3 is 9. The outer is minus 6i. The inner is minus 6i. And the last is plus 4i squared. By combining the middle terms, we get 9 minus 12i plus 4 times a negative 1, since i squared is defined as negative 1. So then this becomes 9 minus 12i minus 4. And we combine the real parts to get 5 minus 12i as our final answer in a plus bi form for a complex number. In problem set number 4, we want to divide and write our answers in the form of a plus bi. Well, in order to um, simplify these types of problems, it's similar to rationalizing the denominator. So we want to get rid of the i that's in the denominator, and we do that by multiplying by the conjugate. Now, if you have a complex number in the form of a plus bi, then the conjugate is a minus bi. So if we have just simply i in the denominator, the, the conjugate is negative i. So we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by i so that we end up with 2i in the numerator divided by i squared. Now remember that i is the same thing as the square root of negative 1, and i squared is equal to negative 1. So the negative or the i squared in the denominator can be written as 2i divided by negative 1, or in simplified form, negative 2i as our final answer, and it's written in the form of a plus bi. In this case, a would be 0, so this only has an imaginary part. In example b, we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator again by i so that we get rid of the i that's in the denominator. When we do that, the numerator is 3i and the denominator is 7i squared. By simplifying this, we have 3i in the numerator 
and i squared in the denominator is negative 1. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. So then we can write this in simplified form as negative 3i over 7 as our final answer. In example C, we need to multiply by the conjugate. In the numerator, we have 6. In the denominator, we have 2 plus 3i. So we want to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of 2 plus 3i, which is 2 minus 3i. Now, whenever you're multiplying the denominator by 3 minus 2, 2 minus 3i, we also want to multiply the numerator, so we're not changing the value of the whole expression. In the numerator, we're going to use the distributive property to multiply 6 times the conjugate 2 minus 3i to get 12 minus 18i in the numerator. And in the denominator, we're going to use the FOIL process, first, outer, inner, last. Well, the first 2 times 2 is 4, the outer is minus 6i, the inner is plus 6i, and the last is minus 9i squared. We can combine the like terms in the denominator and also write this i squared as a negative 1 so that in the numerator we still have the 12 minus 18 i in the denominator we have two opposites here and the minus 9 i squared is the same thing as minus 9 times a negative 1 or the same thing as 2 plus 9 in i'm sorry 4 plus 9 in the denominator So we can write our final answer as 12 minus 18i over 13, but write it in the a plus b i form. We could split that up into two fractions to get 12 over 13 minus 18 over 13i, so that our final answer is in the a plus b i form. In example 5, we want to find each power of i. Since i to the first we can write as i, and i is the same thing as the square root of negative 1, then i squared is equal to negative 1. So these are ways we can simplify any higher powers of i. Since i to the third can be written as i times i to the second power, and i to the second power is the same thing as negative 1, i to the third is simplified to negative i. So in example a, i to the third, we can think of writing this as i times i to the second power, where i to the second power is the same thing as negative 1. So i times a negative 1 is simply negative i as our final answer. i to the fourth can also be simplified. In fact, all powers of i can be simplified as long as the powers are integers i to the fourth, we can write i to the fourth the same thing as i squared times i squared. And since i squared is negative 1, and i squared is also negative 1, then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So i to the fourth power is always simplified to 1. Now let's look at higher powers of i. For example, i to the fifth. Well, i to the fifth is the same thing as i to the fourth times i to the first. And i to the fourth, we know from the previous example, i to the fourth is equal to 1. So this is the same thing as 1 times i, or i as our final answer. i to the fifth is the same thing as i. Now let's look at i to the sixth power. We can always break any powers into um, one of these powers of i from i to the first to i to the fourth. So i to the sixth is the same thing as i to the fourth times i to the second power. And we know from the previous examples that i to the fourth is a positive one and i to the second is a negative one. So when we simplify those, we get negative one as our final answer, i to the sixth is the same thing as negative one. Now i to the twenty-seventh can be simplified as well. One way to do that is to take i to the twenty-seventh and write it as i to the twenty-fourth, a power of four, 
um, times i to the third power. Now i to the 24th power is the same thing as i to the fourth power raised to the sixth power by using the power rule for exponents. And i to the third power is the same thing as i to the second power times i to the first power. By simplifying, we know i to the fourth is equal to one. So one to the sixth power, and i to the second power is equal to negative one. So then we can simplify this as a positive one times a negative one times i, or in simplified form, negative i as our final answer by reducing i to the 27th and rewriting it as negative i. In example f, we have negative 2i all raised to the fifth power. So this is the same thing as negative 2 to the fifth power times i to the fifth power. And negative 2 to the fifth power is negative 32. And i to the fifth power can be written as i to the fourth power times i to the first power. So this is the same thing as negative 32 times 1 times i. And then an, our final answer can be written as negative 32i.